Good morning. Good to see you all here today. We have a few announcements as we get started. I did want to draw your attention, as most of you are aware, we made a, a few tweaks to our worship service. Most of you should have received an email late this last week as we consider our worship together in times of public health concerns. Um, please note through the service, you'll see in a couple of spots a, uh, a little notation about a change in practice, particularly in regards to the offering, the sharing of the peace, and the distribution of communion. And so uh, I would appreciate it if members did not assume that you knew what is written there and uh, would take a moment to uh, read through those sections. The offering is not going to be passed through the pews. It's there in the uh, center aisle uh, for you to put your offering on your way out of the service. Um, sharing of the peace is by a gentle elbow bump. And uh, the great thing about that is it, it will make you look cooler. It just does. So, um, so that's a good thing. And uh, then lastly, communion. There are a couple of things to note. The one thing I would mention in particular is that we would ask you to refrain from intinction. So please do not take bread and dip it into the chalice. Um, you can read more of the instructions in that section, but uh, just as a heads up along those lines. Elizabeth. Good morning. I'm going to invite my high school girls to come on up with me. Stand with me in solidarity on International Women's Day. Um, so these lovely ladies are going to be selling barbecue tickets after this church service. So don't head to your car, just linger in the narthex and uh, pick up your ticket. So we're doing our annual silent auction to barbecue on, do you know the date? 22nd. That's right, March 22nd. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a big community event. Preschool is going to be there. We get it catered. We're not barbecuing. It's catered by Zook's Barbecue, which is famous in Palo Alto. Um, and we're going to have silent auction items, sailboat cruises, vacation homes, weekends away in the mountains. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we hope that you'll come and join us and you can get tickets from any of these ladies here. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. As Elizabeth just mentioned, today on March 8th, it's International Women's Day for over a hundred of years already. And you will notice in the service and also afterwards that we remember this day. The service has a very female touch with songs, with the hymns written or composed by females. Then um, we have a lot of female readers. We have uh, 
outside in the narthex our signs up for international women's day and we do um, um, a, we collect donations for for ehp customers so ecum the ecumenical hunger program that's where we uh, sometimes bring food donations and um, we collect menstrual supplies for those women there and with coronavirus it seems to be even more necessary because not only toilet paper is sold out, also menstrual supplies. So if you haven't thought about it this week, remember it next week, bring menstrual supplies and uh, put it in the narthex and we will make sure that the women that need them get them. Thank you. Thank you. Lastly, in regards to this season of Lent, a few things to remember. We are, as we are, have every year, collecting canned food for the South Palo Alto Food Closet. You can find the wagon in the narthex uh, back there. Also, feel free to take a moment. We do a letter writing campaign every year as well through Bread for the World. That is letter writing to our elected officials to take action related to issues related to hunger and also opportunities to give to ELCA World Hunger. Um, in the offering section in the bulletin, you can see how to do that through text to give. Um, if that's helpful, there's different kinds of things that you can give to through text to give, um, but that's an option there. Um, I wanted to update folks on prayer concerns. Pastor Cora had been hospitalized a couple weeks back for a couple of nights, and by the following Sunday, uh, it was such old news, I forgot to say anything about it. So long story short, she's home, she's great, she's been home for a while, and I apologize for uh, not closing that loop. Um, we also want to remember in our prayers today um, Pastor Frederica's Oma uh, Mariana, uh, who has been hospitalized but is doing better, and uh, a newer family in our congregation, the, the Weakers family, Ilsa and her family. Her father, Fred, who is a retired pastor in Ohio, uh, was very recently and, and surprisingly diagnosed with a very late stage cancer. And so that was a red eye flight back east. And uh, so we certain, certainly remember Pastor Weakers and family at this time. Um, I also uh, wanted to mention, because I don't see them here, last week uh, we had a parishioner fall in the side aisle here, and um, Jeanette is doing great and fine. She did break the smaller bone in her wrist, though, so um, she's uh, had a little bit of follow-up on that front, but she is doing just fine otherwise, so I thought I would report back on that since she's not sitting up front. I think that's enough. <laughs> Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, our leader and guide, in the waters of baptism, you bring us to new birth to live as your children. Strengthen our faith in your promises, that by your spirit we may lift up your life to all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading from Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Word of God, word of life.
second reading from Romans. What are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. According to John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet, you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be safe through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. I have a story to read you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So, does anybody remember what Pastor Frederica said we were celebrating today? International Women's Day, right? And so we're going to read a little bit of this book. It's called Gritty and Graceful. 
Inspiring Women of the Bible. Pretty cool. So, here we go. Can you see the pictures? It wasn't easy to be a girl in the Bible times. Girls lived hard lives. People didn't listen to girls. People didn't believe girls. Most of the time, people didn't even want girls. But God was not like that. God used girls and boys to do great things, and God did great things for girls. God made girls good. That's what the Bible says. But the Bible also shows us that God made girls with grit and grace. That means that God made girls strong and kind, and God made girls to be gritty and graceful in everything we do, just like the women in the Bible. Do you see what they're doing here? Canned food drive, just like we're doing. Pretty awesome. Look at this. She looks pretty gritty and graceful, huh? I am Deborah. I was a prophet, a judge, a poet, and a warrior. One day, enemies threatened, threatened God's people. Our top soldier, Barak, was too afraid to fight them. But I wasn't afraid. I was ready. I led 10,000 soldiers into battle that day. I told the soldiers that a woman would lead us into battle and win, and that God would deliver us. And because of my bravery and God's help, that's exactly what happened. God did great things for me, and I did great things for God. Pretty cool, right? And there's a bunch of stories in here. Look at all these women doing really cool things. So I'm going to put this back in the library, and if you want to check this out, you can. But let's say a prayer. God, we thank you for sending your son Jesus and for the love that we share Thank you for gritty and graceful women who teach us how to be strong and brave and kind. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. In knock at the door, in the dead of the night. Enter. A man stands on the doorstep. Jesus recognizes him. Nicodemus, what do you want? He says, surprised, not unkind. Nicodemus answers, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these things that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus frowns. If Nicodemus knows, as he says, why does he come by night, hidden in the darkness, unwitnessed? Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. What do you mean, Rabbi? I know that God is our king, but how can anyone be born again? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born again? No, Nicodemus, I'm not talking about a physical birth. To see the kingdom of God, to enter the kingdom of God, you have to be reborn of water and spirit. I still don't understand. How can these things be? Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Change of scene. Roughly a thousand years earlier than this encounter between Jesus and Nicodemus, God speaks to Abram. Out of the blue, without losing too many words on an introduction. Go, and I will make, you, make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And Abram doesn't ask questions, doesn't inquire after the wise and the house, doesn't doubt. He trusts, he believes in God's promise. God's renewed, 
unconditional blessing from the beginning of time. So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, God created them, male and female, God created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And Abram hears that promise in God's blessing and he feels God's blessing, the force to live the connectedness between creator and creation, the life-giving spirit. Abram believes and he goes with Sarai and Lot and all their possessions and slaves and walks into an unknown future, but a future illuminated by God's promise, a journey of faith. Change of scene. Nicodemus is on this journey too. He comes to Jesus with this expectation to have, with the expectation to have confirmed what he already knows. He is confused. Who is this Jesus? A God-sent teacher and miracle worker? or someone else, who, something more. And did he just make fun of me? Are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Nicodemus leaves the rabbi with mixed feelings in the dead of the night. What does it mean to believe? How do we know we believe? Is there a right or wrong thing, a wrong way to believe? How do we feel when we believe? And in what do we believe? Faith is difficult, complex, changing. When we think and feel we know it's light and clear as daylight, and then suddenly there's doubt again, big and heavy, questioning. We are in the dark, like Nicodemus. How can these things be? And these doubts, these things we don't understand, block our view, block out the light, obstruct the way, paralyze our actions. Change of scene. A baby grows inside a mother's womb, safe, warm, and in the darkness. It grows, and the mother feels the new life kicking inside her. As she is close to full term, she gets impatient and wants to get on with it. It's time. She wants to push that baby through the birth canal into life, into the world, into the light. A journey. God labors for us like a mother giving birth. God wants to push us through the birth canal into greater maturity, into the fullness of life, into faith, lived holy in the world. Being born from above, or reborn or born again is an act of faith that is visible. It is not only something that happens in our minds, but also or even more in our hearts and in our lives so that we become witnesses of our faith, so that we act and not only know. We don't know what our future will hold in the next 10 years or our immediate future in the next 10 hours. We journey too, sometimes like Abram, trusting and walking in the light, and sometimes like, like Nicodemus in the darkness. Believing is just as complicated as being human. But even in our times of doubt, God repeats the initial blessing from the beginning of time, the promise God gave us when God created us, the life-giving blessing that transcends death. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. God's promise of life lasts from the beginning of time until the end we know, into the future we believe in, eternally. Amen.
us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He is sent into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, We pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of rebirth, empower your church throughout the world to be a voice of hope for those who fear judgment or condemnation. Hear us, O God. God of rebirth, your spirit hovered over the waters and you called creation into being. Nurture and bless all signs of rebirth around us and make us good stewards of your creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of rebirth, lead the nations in your way of righteousness. Protect and give courage to those who advocate for the needs of children, migrants, and victims of violence. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of rebirth, Give us a new vision of your healing power among us. Restore hope to those who remain in the depths of depression or despair. Bring mercy and relief to those who are afraid, injured, sick, or suffering, especially for Fred and Mary Ann. Be with all those we name in our hearts or out loud now. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of rebirth, we thank you for creating humans in all different forms, sizes, shapes, and colors. Help us to see the strength of our diversity, to celebrate the beauty of our variety, and to enhance gender equality. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of rebirth, By wind and spirit, you call us into life renewed. We give you thanks for all your saints who have inherited your promises. Bring us with them into your everlasting kingdom. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I encourage you to share the peace with one another. Use your gentle elbow bump. As you are seated, isn't this so much more fun that way? It's a, <laughs> just a, a couple of, of quick announcements. I wanted to mention that if you are visiting with us today, we'd love to have you fill out one of the white welcome cards that you can find in the pew back in front of you. You can drop it in the offering plate on your way out at the end of the service. And I wanted to just mention two other things quickly. 
uh, members here at Grace that are doing heroic work uh, this last week, in particular Greg Vasutin, who is rerouting all of the courtyard lights and electrical over by Brown Hall. It's an epic amount of work and we'll be able to see at night, which is kind of cool. So, uh, so that's one thing. And I also wanted to mention that if you go to our website now, right on the homepage under the worship times, there's a link to be able to watch any of our worship services live on YouTube. So uh, it's something we've wanted to do for quite a while, and in particularly in this season of health concerns, we wanted to make sure that that was an option that we have. So it's just our website, right where the uh, worship times are listed. You can see it right there. And without further ado, the choir. Please stand as you are able.
Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us in these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Faithful God, in Jesus you fulfilled all righteousness. In him you turn our duty to joy and our sorrow into dancing. You give us new birth through water and spirit. Send down your Holy Spirit now so that this bread of sustenance and this wine of celebration may become for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of of me. Generous God, you love the world so much that you gave your only Son. Infuse your church with spirit and truth, and fill your saints with the hope of eternal life, that all may come to praise your name, ever one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven,
may be seated as we sing. And again, I would encourage you to look over the communion instructions one more time. As you come forward to receive the sacraments, you may take a glass from the basket, receive the bread. The first assistant has wine, the second grape juice, and again, feel free to follow the instructions in your bulletin as the Spirit moves you. All is ready, all are welcome.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms of making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. Amen. that your offering can be placed in the plate in the aisle. Go in peace, feed the hungry. Thanks be to God.